In this video, we are going to be looking at two more difficult conservation of energy problems. This first sample problem is a roller coaster problem, which are pretty common with conservation of energy problems. So the roller coaster in the figure starts at point one with a speed of three meters per second. Find the speed at points two, three, and four. So when solving conservation of energy problems, you just want to set the initial energy equal to the final energy. So the energy in the initial scenario equal to the energy in the final scenario. So we actually have multiple initial and final scenarios here. So I think the best way to start a problem like this with multiple points is to write out what energy is in each point. So with this first point, we definitely have gravitational potential energy. This line right here is height zero, so it'll have gravitational potential energy because it is at a height of 35 meters. And be careful here because this roller coaster is moving at a speed of three meters per second at that point, so it will also have kinetic energy. Notice how I'm using those subscripts. They'll be useful later for keeping track of which point I'm actually finding information for. So at point two, let's imagine what this coaster is doing. So it'll go whoop, whoop, whoop. So it'll be going fast here, slower here, and then faster here. I think it helps to imagine what the object is actually doing in these problems. So at point two, all of this energy will be fully turned into kinetic energy. It's at a height of zero, so it will, it will have zero gravitational potential energy. So kinetic energy there. At point three, it'll have gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy, and it will also have gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy at point four. So in order to find the speed at point two, we want to set our initial scenario at point one equal to our final scenario at point two. So we're going to say GPE1 plus KE1 equals KE2. Now we can go ahead and plug in our formulas for those types of energy. So we'll have MGH1 plus one half MV1 squared equals one half MV2 squared. Again, I'm using these subscripts to indicate which point I'm getting and using information for. So I'm solving for V2, and I'm not given a mass, but that's okay, because I can just cancel out all of these Ms. And then I can go ahead and plug in numbers as well. So G will be 9.8, H1 is 35, uh, V1 is the three meters per second it's going at, at point one, and then I'm looking for V2. So on the left-hand side, when we multiply those numbers and add them together, we will end up with 347.5 equals one half V2 squared. Solve that expression for V2, and you get 26.36 meters per second. So that is the correct answer for the speed at point two. Now, we have a choice here for finding the speed at point three, because we could say that point one is our initial scenario, or we could say that point two is our initial scenario, because both of these come before point three. So I personally like to be consistent and keep using point one as my initial scenario for all of the other points, but it's perfectly correct to solve it if you use point two as your initial scenario. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now set GPE1 plus KE1 equal to GPE3 plus KE3. And then I'm going to go ahead and plug in the formulas for, for those. And notice how I have the subscripts H3 and V3 because we've switched to our final scenario being 0.3. Also, all of these M's will cancel. Then, since I already know what this is going to be when I plug in these numbers, it's going to be 347.5, I can sort of skip an algebra step and just go ahead and write this 347.5 right here. 
And then on the other side, I plugged in numbers. So G is 9.8. At H3, the height is 28. And I'm looking for V3. So if I multiply 9.8 times 28 and subtract that number from both sides, I get 73.1 equals 1 half V3 squared. Solve that for V3 and you get 12.09 meters per second for the speed at position number three. Last we, lastly, we're just going to do the same thing for position four. Again, I'm going to say that point one is my initial position or my initial scenario and what's happening at four is now my final scenario. So GPE1 plus KE1 equals a GPE4 plus KE4. Now I can plug in the formulas, and again the masses cancel. And again, I know that once I plug this stuff in, on the left hand side I will get 347.5, plug in numbers on the right hand side, G is 9.8, H4 is 15, and then I'm looking for V4. Then if I do 9.8 times 15 and subtract that from both sides, I get 200.5 equals 1 half V3 squared. And if I solve that, I get V4 is equal to 20.02 meters per second. Now notice that these answers make a lot of physical sense. It makes sense that the roller coaster is going to go at a much faster speed when it's lower down, and then it'll slow down a bit going up that hill and then speed up a bit more going down this hill. So just think about whether your answer makes physical sense when you're finished these problems. We are going to do one more sample problem. We have a two kilogram ball that is let go on the top of an incline that has a height of 3.2 meters. If the spring in the diagram has a spring constant of 85 newtons per meter, by how much is it compressed? So let's first imagine what this ball will do as it goes along. So it'll roll down and it'll gain speed. And then with that same speed, it'll roll along here, remember, because we're neglecting friction. And then it'll compress the spring and come to a stop. So when the ball is up here, that is our initial scenario, and when the ball is compressed against the spring, that is our final scenario. So in the initial scenario, the ball will have gravitational potential energy, and yes, it will have kinetic energy along the way, but in the absolute final scenario, when it is compressed against the spring, it'll just have elastic potential energy because it has come to a stop. So this one's actually pretty easy. All we have to do is set the GPE in our initial scenario equal to the EPE in our final scenario. Now we can go ahead and plug in the formulas for each of those types of energy. So we'll have MGH equals 1 half KX squared. So we are looking for how much it is compressed. So that's going to be X. So we're looking for X, which means we can plug in numbers for our other values. So M is 2, G is 9.8, H is 3.2, and K is 85. So on the right-hand side, it'll be 62.72, and on the right-hand side equals 42.5 X squared. Divide both sides by 42.5, and then take the square root of both sides, and you get that X is equal to 1.21 meters. So hopefully you learned a bit more about solving conservation of energy problems. The main things I think I want you to get from this video are, one, um, imagine what the object is doing along the way, and then sort of pause the object in the initial scenario and the final scenario, and just set those equal to each other.